Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praises are due to Allah Rabbul Izzat, Master of the Worlds, Most Gracious, Most Merciful, Most Forgiving. Durood and salam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabb, salli wa sallim da'iman abadan ala habibika khayri al-khalqi kullihimi. The wedding had happened already. It meant fetching the bride. So the girls party said to the boys party, come and fetch the bride, but we only want the youngs, young couples to come. We don't want any elderly people to come and fetch the bride. As they were embarking and they were leaving, one elderly man from the family said to them, put me into a drum and take me with. In case you need to discuss something with somebody there, you need mashwara, you need to consult. Remember the words? Mashwara, consultation, mutual consultation. So, in case you need to consult with somebody, you just refer to the drum and we will do a quick discussion. The boys' party came to the girls' party's house and as they were, they were ready to leave, the elders from the girls' party said that we will not release her. We will not release her. We will not allow her to come with you unless every one of you has an entire lamb to eat. We're serving each one with a lamb and each one of you must eat a lamb. Now, there were youngsters, they were concerned what to do, how to do, how to go about. So the one youngster went to the drum and he whispered into the drum, this is our dilemma. How do we overcome it? The man in the drum said to, him, to them, or said to him, each one of you will be served with a lamb. Eat the lamb to your hearts full, as much as you need to eat or as much as you can consume. The rest of it, leave it, the birds will eat it. So they did just that and they were able to take the bride home. The point I'm making, the energy of the youth, the young, and the wisdom of the elderly goes together. The energy of the youth and the wisdom and foresight of the elderly goes together. In terms of mashwara, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Consult with the people around you, talk to them, identify who you're going to consult with. Always be a mindful, cognizant person and be mindful of the people that surround you, their strengths, their weaknesses, what they have to offer to you and what sort of threat they can pose to you as a leader. Thereafter, you identify the person that you're comfortable with and you want to work with. So make mashwara. There are two aspects. You talk to the committee, you talk to the people around you, you discuss with them, you take everybody's views and then the Amir of that sitting takes a decision. That is called Shura. The other scenario is the Amir takes a decision. He has a little caucus. There's a few, one or two people that he talks to. He takes a decision and then he puts it in front of the committee. 
and he says to them, this is the decision that I'm running with. You understood the difference? Did you get the difference? The one is where you have a matter at hand. You put it on the table. What is your view? What is your view? What is your view? What is your view? You take everybody's opinions into consideration and then you take a decision. The other is you have your own confidant that you consult with. You're convinced that you've taken the right decision. And then you call your consultative committee and you say to them, this is my decision and this is the route that I choose to adopt. This is the way that I'm going to follow. We're going to do an example of these. After the demise, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed on, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu an had taken the reins. There wasn't an issue in appointing Hazrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu an to the position of leadership because Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had already in his lifetime indicated to Abu Bakr radiyallahu an go on to my musalla, okay? Go on to my musalla. That was a clear indication that you succeed me, you take over the reins. But immediately after the demise of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a resistance from some quarters that had renegated, that had left the fall of Islam, that were there for convenience. They had their own motives. They were not sincere in their belief of Allah. They were there for a temporary purpose. They had a motive and they walked away. After the demise of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they saw no purpose in being involved in the religion. So they moved away. So there was irtidad. The army of Usama radiallahu an was ready to be dispatched to go out into the battlefield. Do we still send them or don't we send them? The master has just passed away. And then there was a third force that came to the fore and that was, they said, we're not paying zakat. This is my hard earned money. This is my sweat. I spent hours I rose early in the morning, went to bed late at night. All my energy I put into getting this wealth. And now I must give it in zakat? Uh-uh. I'm not willing to do that. Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu an put a firm stand. He took a very firm stand. He said, the murtaddin, those that made irtidad, will be dealt with. Usama radiallahu anhu's army will be dispatched and zakat will be paid. You all know Umar radiallahu an huge structure, stature, decisive, assertive, character, strong personality and he was known to make hard decisions. Abu Bakr radiallahu an would have expected him in this instance to support him. Umar radiallahu an said to Abu Bakr, we've just lost the master. We can go a little slower. We can be a little lenient. We can be a little accommodating in this instance. On that instance, Abu Bakr said, Jabbarun fil jahiliya wa khawwarun fil Islam. You were so forceful during the period of ignorance and now you've become so timid when it comes to Islam this is the time we need to take a stand we need to uphold the values of the Prophet who was the decision maker? who was the decision maker? Abu Bakr radiallahu an who did he consult with? did he consult with anybody? understand that? he didn't but he was convinced of his stand and position in the matter. At the occasion of Uhud, how do we engage the enemy? Do we remain in Medina and allow them to come into Medina and meet them in Medina? Or do we go out of Medina and meet them outside of Medina? You must remember Badr was still fresh. The wounds of Badr still remained fresh. Those people are going to come with a vengeance. They're going to come determined to conquer. 
Are we going to remain in Medina and receive them? Because we've got all the defense in Medina. Medina is our land. This is my turf. Or are we going to go out of Medina? And the preferred view was we go out of Medina. When they went out of Medina, and when they saw the enemy arriving, there was that element of doubt that set in. At that instance, Allah Ta'ala said and made a very strong, powerful, decisive statement advising Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَإِذَا عَزَّمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ If you have taken a decision, remain firm on it. Be confident about it. Be certain that you've done the right thing. So the important point that we take into cognizance, we, we need to be mindful of. Follow processes diligently, religiously. Ensure that you follow the processes correctly. Don't have ulterior motives. Be clear about your objectives. Understand clearly what you are going to be engaging and encountering. And thereafter, do your necessary consulting. Discuss with the people that you find reliable. Talk to them. Now you've taken a decision. Don't hesitate. Stand firm on your decision. In leadership, the word popularity doesn't feature. If you're out there to become a leader, you won't necessarily become popular. Leadership is doing what the public wants you to do, doing what is correct for the best interest of the public. You understand the difference? One is doing what the public wants you to do. Can I stand here and please all 50 of you? I'll never be able to please you. But I will take your opinion. Each one of you will offer your opinion. I will measure your opinions. I will weigh your opinions. And then I will apply my mind and I will say, this is in the broader best interest for this entire group of people. Some will be happy, some won't be happy. But the broader has to say, yes, I accept and I respect the decision of the person in charge. An important rule that features. Always keep yourselves surrounded by intelligent people. If you've been appointed into a position, make sure that you have smart people around you, surrounding you. Make sure that you have such people that will give you smart advice, intelligent advice. Ultimately, you would succeed, your mission will succeed, and credit will go to you for taking the right decision. By choosing a friend, you're not necessarily serving the cause. By selecting a cousin, you're not necessarily serving the cause. By looking at people that will toe the line, if I say jump, you must jump they won't necessarily give you the kind of advice that is good for you. You need people that are smart, that are independent in their thinking, and that can advise you smartly. Then you measure their advice, and you apply what is most befitting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I have two advisors in the world. In the world, I've got two advisors, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu an. And in the heavens, I've got two advisors, Jibreel and Mikail. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not walk around as a silo, individual, an oasis that features by itself. He had a circle that he associated himself with. The great leaders of the world, in the great Sultanate period, when Islam was in its glory, the downfall that was caused was because the advisory, listen to me, the advisory was infiltrated by ill-intended people. People like Faizi, Faizan, those were names that featured 
they had other motives and purposes. They infiltrated the advisories of Walid bin Abdul Malik and other, and over a period of time, they eroded the system. So you've got to be very smart in who you consult with and how you consult. On another occasion, Umar radiallahu an came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, poetry, I don't think it is befitting for us to be saying poetry in the masjid. Let's avoid that kind of setup. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Umar, poetry is like throwing a sword, throwing a spear against or in the hearts of the mushrikeen. Umar radiallahu an put his matter to rest immediately. And when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was towards the end of his life, in his last illness, Umar radiallahu an said to him, Ya Rasulullah, I don't think it is wise for us to be writing everything that you say right now. Time is limited, it is short, don't have everything written. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I will just speak and whatever you remember, you remember. So there were instances where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was advised, where he accepted in, uh, advice, and there were instances where he did not accept the advice of Umar radiallahu an. I gave you two scenarios, the Amir scenario and the Shura scenario. The hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on top of the Amir, on the head of the Amir. If the Amir takes a decision, there's always goodness to it. And I'm going to leave you with these five points. When it comes to having to take major decisions, or ordinary decisions, on a day-to-day -day basis, anything that you need to do. Number one, identify what it is that you need to undertake. Once you've identified what you need to undertake, the first point is to make istikhara. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I intend buying this car. Ya Allah, I intend buying this house. Ya Allah, I intend buying this business. Ya Allah, I've received a proposal from a good suitor. Ya Allah, I am in a dilemma. I need to make a decision. Turn to Allah. Number two, talk to your parents. Talk to reliable people. Talk to people that you know are going to give you good counsel and that you can trust. On that point, I'm going to mention one more thing, and that is integral in selecting your friends and your confidants. Number three, make dua. Number four, give sadaqah. And number five, when carrying out the action, send durood upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I leave you with this. Ahbiba habibu kahonam ma, asa ay yakuna baghidu kahonam ma. Abaghid. Habibuka Hunamma, Asa Ayyakuna, Habibuka Hunamma. Select your friends, your consultative, with such moderation and make your confidant such and show an affection and attachment to your friends in such a way that you don't show all your cards, you don't display all your cards, all your secrets in front of them. There could be a time that your relationship with them may become strained and then you are too embarrassed because they know about every secret of yours. And don't hate your enemy and detest them to such an extent that you totally debase, humiliate, insult and you pull the carpet away from them because possibly tomorrow they could become your best friends. The heart of man is between the two fingers of Allah. It could be turned this way or that way. Mashwara draws the mercy of Allah. It brings goodness into the situation and it navigates and allows for good practice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the understanding of what I've said. I try to wrap it up in 30 minutes. And mashwara is integral, girls. Boys, it is integral to our lives. 
if you're going into a shop and you need to buy a shoe, mommy, what's your opinion? Daddy, what's your opinion? What's your opinion? What do you think this thing will look like uh, nice on me? And if they say yes, it will look nice on you. Walk with it. Think about it. Allahumma khirli wa khtarli. Oh Allah, guide me in this matter. Any matter, every matter, learn to turn to Allah for guidance as well. The way that we've learned the small surahs and the kalimas, that is how the Sahaba were taught the istikhara dua, so that they could constantly, regularly turn to Allah for guidance. So we've touched a little bit on istikhara as well. We've done a little bit on mashwara as well. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us the guidelines, but also said, if it is that which is in harmony with what Allah Ta'ala decides, it has come from Allah, and if it is not in harmony with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decision, you still get one reward for your effort and your application. Jazakumullah khair wa ma'alina illa al-balaq.